So earlier in the summer, my wife and I went up to Tobermory, which is beautiful, by the way, but don't go there. It's overrun with tourists. <laughs> and we picked up this print, and I want to make a frame for it. And we want to make a double frame. So we have an inner and an outer frame. I've, do I've done previous videos on making frames. Um, so, yeah, I considered a, a wide inner border followed by some cherry. Um, I didn't like the white. The place where we bought it, he used a lot of, uh, a lot of blue gray. So I, I mocked up some blue, you know, sort of a, a grayish sort of frame and we didn't like that. And uh, I, don't, I don't have uh, some printed up, but I have this sort of black background. But anyway, so what we think is gonna look the best is black. We think that's gonna give a nice inner frame. So I wanna make a, a double frame with a black inner and probably a cherry outer. So for the inner frame, we're thinking about this much, about an inch and a half. And then, yeah, about three inches for the outer frame. So I'm gonna to need to prep something for the inner frame, probably pine or something, because it's just gonna get painted black. And then I need to make up some cherry stock for the outer frame. And thickness is gonna be an issue because this is about seven eighths about seven eighths of an inch thick is the uh, is the is the picture frame. So by thickness being an issue, um, I want the frame to be a little bit thicker than the picture because I want there to be a rabbit. So the picture will sit in that rabbit, so it'll be tucked into the frame. And so yeah, so whatever frame has to be at least as thick as the picture, so that it's flush to the wall on the side. So for the inner frame, I was just going to use this piece of pine board that I've got, but it turns out that it is actually just a little bit less than an inch. And so I know once I have this plane, it's probably gonna be more like three quarters of an inch, which is the same as a picture. So there's not really any room for the rabbit unless I start laminating this up, which I, I could. But then in the corner of the shop, there was this uh, two by six that has been lying around for a while. And I'm like, oh, you know, construction lumber, that can move a fair bit. It's not always kiln dried properly, so I, pulled out my uh, moisture meter to check. This is just your basic moisture meter with pins. I got this from Lee Valley years ago. And I turn it on and there's my light comes on at uh, between eight and 9%. I've checked it in several places. So that, that's pretty good. The pine board is also eight to 9%. So this two by six should be hopefully just as stable, but I'll give it a quick, quick joint and plane and we'll see. Worst comes to worse. I'm back to the pine board and doing some laminating. I planed it down to just a bit, just a hair over an inch. That means I can take a three quarter inch rabbit and have a quarter inch or so left. So next I wanna make the rabbit on the inside of the inner frame and I'm gonna do that on the table saw and to do that, I'm going to mount a sacrificial fence so that I can bring the blade right up against the fence so that I'm not trapping the workpiece between the blade and the fence. It probably would be fine. I'm just gonna do this for safety and just to show you a different way of doing things. I used a mitering jig, kind of based off the one that Steve Ramsey from the Woodworking for Mere Mortals channel uh, produced a video four years ago. Um, if I was to make another one, I think I'd probably look at the one from David Picciuto. I really, really like the features he's got on that, on that framing jig. This Bessie frame clamp is pricey at over 50 bucks Canadian, but it is really nice for helping align things. And just because, I'm gonna go corner to corner also. 39 and a touch over 3 eighths. Thirty-nine and a touch over three eighths.
Hey, I'm going to leave this for a bit just to let the glue set up. And here we are a little bit later and now I have a maple frame. So the 2x4 was going fine except for the fact that I messed up a few dimensions and it was too small. The uh, painting would not fit inside it so I just quickly remade it out of maple that I had lying around. And, um, and what sometimes happens then is you go too far in the other direction and so this one is actually just a bit too big but that's easier to fix by making just a few spacers to fit in here. So I'm just going to glue those into place and we'll move on. So it's a little while later and I got the frame nicely painted. I'll get the inner frame nicely painted. So now we need to work on the outer frame. Now recall this frame is just a bit under an inch. We're just going to call it an inch thick. And of course here's the lip where the picture will fit in behind this lip. So the outer frame also needs to have a little bit of a lip to go over top so that this will lock into place there. So my inner frame is an inch thick. It means my outer frame, I'd really like it to have minimum inch and a quarter, closer to inch and a half, so I have room to fit that rabbit to have it loop over. But I'm also thinking of aesthetics. I don't want it to be too chunky. So I think I want it just thick enough. And I was aiming, I was aiming for about a three inch wide frame. However, if you look behind me here, I'm running a bit low on thicker cherry. This, this is all I've got. In fact, I'm, I've only got like three cherry boards left in my stock. So I've definitely got to try to find time to get out to the sawmill and increase my stash. These are an inch and three eighths in thickness but it's only five and a half wide. Now, of course, when I dress it, it's going to come down closer. So I thought about like getting some other cherry and laminating it together, but I'm just going to try working with this. So instead of a three inch wide frame, we're going to have a little bit more like two and a half, two and three quarter inch wide frame. We'll see what we can get out of this. All right, no, no, no. this is not working. Look at these boards. These are potato chips. By the time I plane and joint these things. Look at this. We're going to lose half the wood in planing and jointing if I tried to get something this long. That's not going to work. All right, so I turned the camera off for a little bit because, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I just uh, am running out of the wood that I wanted to use and that as you saw, that other stuff was too much of a pretzel. I couldn't make that work. So I was, took my last board of cherry that I had and I cut that up and that wasn't thick enough, but uh, I did some planing and jointing. And now I have to laminate some pieces together and kind of annoyed. I really wanted to do this out of, you know, one piece because um, this is laminating for thickness, not for, not for width. Um, on the plus side, I mean, now I'm going back to the uh, three inch plan that I had because this piece was a bit wider, but we'll see when this glue all dries, what it looks like if I'm uh, happy with how well the joint is hidden. Oh, two long pieces, two short pieces, but they need a little bit of cleaning up and, you know, inch and a half, inch and a half. They need to be trimmed down and cut to my three inch size and then we'll see what we got. And so, of course, that means more planing, more joining. And after planing and joining, I took them to the table saw where I ripped them down to three inches wide. So you're getting to see all my problems in this video because I'm having a lot of them with this project. <laughs> okay, so I brought you in really close to show you this. So I've cut the pieces to three inches wide and as you can see, there is the sap line. Now some people like a bit of sap in their projects, but I generally don't. But regardless, this is the only sap that there would be. So I'm like, well, no, no, I want this 
than to be the back of the piece. Unfortunately, when you flip it over, I've got a knot right there. And again, some people like to have some knots. They think it adds some character. I generally prefer not to have a knot showing. And regardless, this would be the only one on the entire piece and it would just stick out like a sore thumb. I'm not sure what happened if I, if I, if I had this the wrong way around when I laminated it or if it just goes through. Regardless, this unfortunately has got to be on the back, which means I'm going to have to trim everything down to at least uh, two and three quarters if I'd be really lucky, more likely two and five eighths, just to have a bit of room to get rid of this sap line here. Oh yes. Over the years, I've had several people tell me how much they appreciate me leaving the mistakes in my video so they can see how I face them and have to deal with them because we all have them. So yeah, I'm just leaving in all the mistakes, or not the mistakes, I'm leaving in all the problems in this video and working through them. So it's probably gonna end up being kind of long, but anyways, I'm going to now cut this down to two and a half and rather than skipping the mistake part, I'm just gonna skip the cutting part. <laughs> So I'm going to take this rectangular stock and turn it into a picture frame in terms of ornamentation now. Now I, I have this style of picture frame that my wife and I like. I've been making it for years. I have a detailed video going into how I make it. Basically I start on the table saw and I cut these two very shallow dado grooves down the length of the strip. And then I take it to the router table and I Cut around over here. And then here we cut a cove. And then later on I cut a dado and that's it. I, I like a fairly minimal ornamentation frame and that's what I'm gonna be working on next. And so here we are. Let me bring this into focus if I can. There's my frame stock. I got my two dados, I got my roundover, I got my cove, and I have my rabbit. There's my frame stock. I got enough to make the picture. And so back to the table saw, back to the 45 angle jig. And this time, let's be real careful with the measurements. So if you're familiar with these jigs, you know the idea is that this is a perfect 90 degree angle and it's coming to the blade. And so even if this is not a perfect 45, the two are gonna add up to a perfect 90. And so as long as you have a piece from either side mating together, that should make a perfect 90 degree, which should give you a perfect angle. So what I've taken to doing is I'll cut a piece on the right side and I'll mark it with an R and then I'll make sure that I match that up with another piece that I've cut from the from the left side of the jig and then as I brought each piece to the picture frame I've matched them up so I've got a right and a left together and I've numbered them two and two so that these two go together and we'll keep them all organized as I sort things out around the frame I don't want any more mistakes, so I've purposefully cut the first one long and now I'm gonna sneak up on the length that I want. So I'll probably make a few more cuts. And with this piece sorted out, bring it onto the other side, you know, and use it for setting the length of the other piece. And then cut that one. And after a lot of repeating and testing and repeating and testing I have a frame that is looking pretty good I have a double frame that I think is looking pretty good it's not there's still maybe a little bit of wiggle in here which is just fine I had one little split here let me bring the camera down this piece, I had a little chunk come off 
and I patched that in with a piece from one of the cutoffs and yeah right now the color is a bit off but with time that should blend in. I used a bit of actually there was a split along here that I filled with some super glue and then a little bit of epoxy I put into the fill the gap after I glued in this little piece. And now there's glue up time and I'm going to use the strap clamp for that just like I did on this inner frame and on the frame before that and I'm just going to skip that part right now because this video is getting long enough. After the glue up I reinforced the miters with some biscuits. I got my biscuit cutter and I plunged straight in and now I can just cut them off flush and that'll strengthen up the joint nicely. Okay, now it's time for the big reveal where we put it all together. After some finished sanding, I took the frame out to the garage and I hit it with some spray lacquer and it's looking great. So let's see what it all looks like together. We start with the print and then the black inner frame wraps around it nice and snugly. And then this is what we've been working on. And the outer frame, boom. Oh yeah. Here's a close up where you got the print and then the plain black frame followed by the slightly more fancy cherry frame. And for curiosity's sake, here's what the back looks like. Here's the cherry frame, here's the inner maple black frame, and then this is the wrapped canvas of the, uh, of the print. Well, there were a few problems to overcome, but in the end, I think it turned out great. And that marks the end of this one. As always, thanks for stopping by and spending some time in my shop. If you want to go for a bit of a deeper dive into how I like to make picture frame stock, I'll put that video as a link up here in the end cards, and you can go check that one out. But otherwise, we'll see you on the next one.